Hey guys, welcome back to Come Again TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. I'm Shannon, and today, I know it's been a while, I've been busy, sorry. Today I'm going to review, once and always, the new Power Rangers th uh, film, whatever you want to call it, out on Netflix. Uh, it was kind of a letdown, I want to say. Um, first and foremost, the old, the original Power Rangers... Um, the acting wasn't by any means Oscar worthy or anything like that. Um, but it was still entertaining, uh, with once and always the acting was way over the top. Um, I mean, it was just horrible. It, it felt like they rushed it through so much. Um, I really wish they would have taken a little bit more time on it and got it right um the the actors i know they're uh they can do a lot better they've been acting for over 30 years now uh they could have done so much better but this once and always um like i said it just seemed rushed and uh really kind of phoned in almost um Let's talk the Megazord. The Megazord looked absolutely horrendous. Uh, the CGI they used to uh, create the Megazord, it looked, in some, it looked very short and plump. Um, in others, it looked way too tall and skinny. And it, it wasn't very... Um, it wasn't very good. The original Sentai footage uh, with the actors in the actual Megazord costume was so much better than the CGI they used to create the Megazord. The individual Zords looked okay. Um, but the Megazord just, it wasn't there. Um, also, filming this on my computer real quick. Uh, mm. Let's see. They really should have turned it into a, a hour and a half to two hour film. Uh, like I said, it just felt really rushed. The dialogue, there was so, so much exposition. Uh, like, almost like, Hey, what are you doing now? You know, that type of crap. And I mean, the stories, like I said, this, the stories and all that from the original Power Rangers uh, weren't the greatest. They were cheesy, but they were so, so much better than once and always. Um, you know, I've, I've kind of browsed on YouTube a little bit and seen a couple reviews of people saying how great it was and all this. And I think that's just the nostalgia speaking in all actuality. Um, I am an OG Power Rangers fan. I remember sitting with a bowl of cereal the day it premiered and right in front of my TV, big old console TV and watching it. Um, I remember seeing all the previews for the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and feeling that it was going to be like a dinosaur version of Voltron, you know, and then seeing the first episode for the first time and being amazed. And I was right there in the height of Power Rangers popularity and seeing the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie for the first time and being there where you couldn't go to the store and just pick up a Power Rangers toy because they were all sold out um, every week. And to this day, I still never actually got the tall Mighty Morphin Power Rangers or any of the Megas, any of the Zords um, because of that. And I, the only Ranger figures actually I got from the original uh, Mighty Morphin era were the flip Morphin style ones that they re-released. Um, 
but this was just a huge, huge letdown for us original fans. I was talking to Jared, uh, who's been on the show a couple times, and he agreed it, it was definitely overrated. Um, I there were some things I liked. Um, I liked the fact that first of all, we never get to, we never uh, find out what SPA stands for. Uh, all we know is that Adam and Aisha are across the galaxy. Um, helping uh, other planets and stuff. That's all we find out. Um, and, you know, Zach is a congress or former congressman. Uh, he, after Trini dies saving Billy, he t takes it upon himself to become, uh, what, uh, what's her name? Min's uh, guardian. And so he retires from uh, Congress. Billy, the command center isn't actually a command center. It's uh, Cranston Technologies, uh, corporate office and stuff. The upstairs is the corporate office and downstairs that uh, the other executives and the employees and everything don't know about the downstairs level, which is like the power chamber. And... Rita was, uh, Rita comes back because Billy and Alpha 8 are trying to locate Zordon and bring him back. Uh, instead, they find Rita's essence. When the Z-Wave hit, it spread out the evil essences across the universe rather than actually destroying them. Uh, and so that's how Rita comes back and she takes it. Uh, she's absorbed into Alpha 8's body. Um... Uh, and I do like how the ending almost left ambiguous uh, when Rita's destroyed. Because you don't know if she's actually destroyed or if she teleported out at the very last second. Uh, we don't actually see her body like explode or anything. We see energy explode, but we don't see her robotic body explode. Um, the concept for the story is good. I did like the concept, but everything else, it was just extremely rushed. And I, I feel like Netflix could have done a lot better. Um, if this is what we have to look forward to in future Ranger projects, uh, I could easily do without it. Um, that being said, <clears throat> I hope they learn from the mistakes of once and always and try a little bit harder next time. Uh, I could easily see this perhaps leading into a new Mighty Morphin series uh, with a new generation of Power Rangers uh, taking up the Mandals. Um, maybe with Zack as the mentor and Billy kind of providing the power chamber to them. Um, since Min's taken over as a Yellow Ranger um, and all this, I just... Like it's the script was the script is terrible. <laughs> I don't know how many others felt that, but the script was horrible. There, there were some good lines, some funny one liners and everything. Uh, and the idea that men couldn't morph until she performed a selfless act or whatever that, that was pretty good. I like that. But the rest of it, the, over um the overboard uh exposition and all this just relaying the backstory over and over um every every ranger's backstory and all this the acting it could have been so so much better uh so for once and always um 
I'm, I'm really going to give it a three out of 10, honestly. Um, I will, I watched it first thing this morning. Um, I got up and, uh, got my kid off to school and was watching it and just finished it. It, it. I hope in the future, if they do another one of these once and always, they do it right. They bring back the, uh, well, I guess the original four since, Tommy and or since just David Frank and Twee are have passed away, um, but I I don't really know much what else I can say about it because it was just if you think the original uh, series is bad and cheesy, this is way past. Um, this isn't even on the radar. <laughs> um, I did like the little cameo by Bulk of Skull. They don't actually make a uh, physical appearance, but there's a billboard. You know, Bulk of Skull own their own, I think, restaurant or something like that. I'm not, I it was kind of a blink and you'll miss it type thing. Uh, that was nice. Uh, the juice bar was nice. The lighting could have been a lot better in there. And yes, it does look a lot smaller, uh, like Zach says, or was it Billy that said that? <clears throat> anyway, uh, those are my thoughts on Once and Always. Uh, this summer, I am, uh, I'll be graduating uh, with my bachelor's in psychology um, next month. So this summer, I will have a lot more time on my hands to bring you guys more videos um, I didn't get a lot of videos in last summer because I was working on three different books. Uh, those are out now. Uh, just look up S.M. Cornthwaite on Amazon. Uh, you have the Hollow Scream series for children. Um, very similar to Goosebumps, Are You For The Dark, all that stuff. Uh, the Haunting of Hell's Hollow, which is for very mature audiences. Uh, Tales from Hell's Hollow, which is kind of a all ages horror short stories, you know. And then my first book, uh, Jack the Ripper, the Man Behind the Blade. Check them out; uh, they're all available on Amazon. So, take care, geeks.